Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and Other Home Energies. This is a diode bridge down here, and I figure I'd take 20, 20 seconds to show you how it all works. I have my meter set on AC, and there's my, it says no voltage. But if I put it on these two, I'm showing you 19.8 volts, and it doesn't matter if I turn them this way or this way. Still, 19.8, that says 19.9. Anyway, let's kick this over to DC voltage, and we'll measure the DC. Swap my leads. And we have 17.4 volts. Now I have a battery up here. I'm going to go ahead and hook the negative lead up to, and show you how the battery becomes the voltage regulator. Now we're going to check the uh, voltage here. The DC volt says 12.9. And when I check the AC over here, you're going to wind up seeing 12.9. 12 AC. And it doesn't matter which way. The battery becomes the voltage regulator. Any extra voltage gets drawn, draws amps, and brings the voltage down. That slows your wind turbine down. Uh, keeping your wind turbine hooked up all the time to the battery is a good thing if your battery gets too full you need to divert your power into what we call a dump load uh, an electric space heater works real good and a relay system uh, which I'll explain in a further video I'm Scott Brown Green Wind and other home energies okay you see right down there at the bottom where the band meets on the inside I have epoxied that edge to keep it from sliding and moving as long as that doesn't move the band can't go inside, and everything else should stay. I didn't put it on very thick. You don't really need much. Plus, I went down the edge. You can see it shining down there. I've done a little down on the edge all the way around. That should keep it in place and should never move again. Okay, I've got all my magnets set up as north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south, all the way down. This keeps me from turning them around in my hand. This saves you a lot of time. Just a quick little tip. So I'm going to start with the first one. Oop, didn't mean to smack you in the mouth there. Sorry. You bleeding? There, there's one. I also made a nice little tool. I have a piece of copper wire. I bent it like this. Copper's non-magnetic. I can adjust it. I want to start right where that band overlap. And there's the first one. That's where you want to put the first one. Just set them in the same way. Don't let them flip over in your hand. Before you glue them down, check them with another magnet. This is much faster this way. Sure takes a lot less time. A lot less confusion. Magnets don't fly around. But this is going to the side a little bit. So start nudging them to the left a little bit. And that ought to line them right on up. In that process, I haven't lost track of which is north and which is south. Thanks to this wonderful and genius idea that I finally came up with after doing so many of them. Oh, and then try cogs. <clears throat> Boy, it cogs. Man, I bet we got some voltage. But if we short all these wires out, it'll be really hard to turn. There we go. It's real hard to <clears throat> it won't spin that's for sure we did something right gotta glue them I'm gonna go ahead and glue this off camera save time for the video that's more than an eighth inch I couldn't squeeze another magnet in there without touching but that's a big gap if I could get that down that gap down half thickness of one of these magnets which is just over an eighth inch everything you saw in my readings we okay, I wanted to show you this um, these are two diode bridges with a call piggybacked. These are set in parallel. These ones go to the positive and negative here. So I'll put the leads from one coil here and the other leads from the other coil here. I'll take the negative and put it there and the positive there. Cover this up real easy in a pill bottle or whatever. These are uh, from these are rated at 8 amps and 400 volts. You'll never blow them. Two packages of these for two dollars and fifty nine cents. Show you and get you up to bearing here. I've got a three quarter inch hole here for the center, 
and I ground out three eighths of an inch deep at one and a half inches except right there this is the side that the bolts come on now I've got these bolts inside here to show you how I decided to do this one get this uh, set in here okay all these bolts are in here on the backward side but they all fit down the edges and I centered this up by looking straight down the middle Let's see I have a little bit of play to play with I centered it all up now I lined it all up where these are in the corners dead center and then I made all my marks where my uh, bolt holes go this is the back side of the blade <laughs> got to remember that this is the back side of the blade and put the front of the motor cover to it okay now those are all marked and I'm gonna go drill press those out these ones here are in the crack I'm not gonna do these two but I will use this one uh, I might use that one I'm gonna use this one and this one and those two there I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use these over here when I'm done I'm gonna take this all apart Epox uh, throw epoxy in it slap it back down check my holes and I'm not going to go ahead and put the cover on here because I like having access to my bolts that way I can take the cover off the motor with the prop and there my dear sirs is my bolt hole pattern all ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all beautiful also drilled. important to note that I drilled these four holes out to accept these larger bolts and that's going to make this a lot stronger. I went ahead and put in these four bolts. I figure if these two were over this far, they'd be centered. And if these two were over this far, they'd be centered. Seems like I had, a, if this was a five bladed unit, and now I'm putting on four blades, and I've got pairs of five, this is what I figured balanced out the best. Plus it left my holes for mounting my motor, or my cover to my motor, or alternator right there. So that worked out pretty well. I went ahead and drilled and did everything there and put these four in here and this should balance. These are the same distance from the hole. Okay, and on the other side. Oh, anyway, I've got lock wa I've got washers right there. And I sunk those washers right on down level with the wood. And they're in there pretty tight. These holes that the fan blades used to mount into are threaded. I went ahead and put nuts on the other side of it after I tightened everything up and tightened these down. This double nuts it and tightens it better than a lock washer and keeps these bolts from turning. And I'll just go ahead and grind them off right above the nut. And that will give me lots of clearance and strength. And these nuts will absorb some of the heat from when I'm grinding to keep from softening the metal and making it soft where it will pull out. So that'll keep it strong. See here? I have doubled up on these magnets because I can. I have a coil here. That's north, north, going through, and south, south, going through that coil. But you have to pay attention to the polarity for the coils themselves. North, north, south, south, north, north. Whoops, there's a hole for a bolt. Doesn't really matter. South, south, north, north, south, south, right here. See? One polarity per coils. I've got another uh, motor in there. It's got like a coil here, another coil here, another coil here, and it's seven coils instead of 14. That's you're gonna have to treat it just like there's a coil in between each of them. Anyway, just for those who have those motors and let them know. Yes, this is gonna double my voltage. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind, and other home energies. Sweet.